Dear viewers, welcome back. In this video, I will present how the AI Act classifies AI systems. The AI Act also classifies AI models, but this will be the topic of my next video. The classification is designed on a WISC-based approach. Each system is classified by determining the risks it poses to health, safety, and fundamental rights. In doing so, the regulation distinguishes between four risk categories. Let's imagine a pyramid with the lowest tier representing minimal risks AI systems. Moving up, we find limited risks AI systems. Next, we have high risk AIs. And finally, at the top, we have prohibited AI practices that pose unacceptable risk. Let's delve into these categories. At the top of the risk pyramid, we face AI practices that pose unacceptable risks for individuals through the violations of fundamental rights and EU values. They are therefore prohibited. The AI Act contains an exhaustive list of such AI practices. Overall, prohibited practices can be grouped into four main categories. First, the use of AI to deceive or manipulate people, particularly by exploiting their vulnerabilities. For example, the Act prohibits AI systems that manipulate humans, including disabled people, to circumvent their ability to make informed decisions. Second, AI practices that make social scoring. This category refers to practices such as Chinese government's control over citizens through AI. Third, the use of AI for criminal risk prediction. For example, AI systems used to predict the risk of a person committing a criminal offense after the profiling of that individual. Fourth, and finally, the use of some biometrics systems. For example, the use of some specific AI systems to identify individuals within publicly available spaces and for law enforcement purposes, or the use of emotion recognition systems in workplace and education. Note that a case-by-case -case analysis is necessary because some AI practices are prohibited only in specific contexts. For example, the use of emotion recognition systems is prohibited in employment or educational context, but not in other circumstances. We move down to the second layer of the pyramid, high risk AI systems. This category applies to AI systems that pose a high risk, evaluated both in terms of probability of occurrence and severity of harm. They are subject to specific obligations, which we will present in an upcoming video. The AI Act distinguishes two types of high risk AI systems. The first category targets AI systems that are themselves or are integrated into products and that are subject to a third-party conformity assessment under specific Union Harmonization Acts, which are listed in Annex 1 of the regulation. For instance, this includes medical devices, toys, lifts, and so on. Let's take an example to illustrate this first category. A manufacturer develops a new cancer detection system using AI. This is a medical device running on AI. Under the medical devices regulation, that system must go through a third-party conformity assessment. Hence, the cancer detection system is classified as high risk. The second category of high-risk AI targets systems that are used for specific sensitive purposes and which therefore present high risks. To identify the specific use cases, one must refer to Annex 3 of the regulation. This annex enumerates eight sectors and details various use cases for each where an AI system must be classified as high-risk. It includes, for example, AI systems used to evaluate the credit score of a person, AI systems intended to be used for emotion recognition, other than those forbidden under prohibited practices. In education, AI systems used to determine access to a formation or to evaluate students. In human resources, AI systems intended to evaluate candidates or to allocate tasks to workers. AI systems used to manage and operate critical infrastructure, such as road traffic or water supply. To assess if a system enters the second category, it is important to carefully read Annex 3 and to pay attention to its wording. 
Besides, certain AI systems listed in Annex 3 might not be classified as high risk when they are intended to perform a limited procedural task, for example, an AI system solely used to screen incoming documents within a company so as to direct them to the appropriate departments, or designed only to improve the outcome of an activity previously performed by a human, For instance, an AI system that is intended to improve the language of documents drafted by humans, or intended to detect decision-making patterns or deviations thereof, and not meant to replace or influence the human evaluation previously completed. For example, an AI system used to check if a teacher is deviated from his grading pattern so as to flag potential inconsistencies, or intended to perform a preparatory task for the use cases listed in Annex 3. This particularly applies to smart solutions for file handling or AI systems used for translation. The idea underlying these alternative conditions is that any system fulfilling one or more of them will not pose a significant risk. The provider of a system listed in Annex 3 who believes his system meets one of these criteria is to document why. Regardless, an AI system targeted by Annex 3 that profiles individuals will always be considered high risk. The third layer of the risk pyramid is that of limited risk AI systems. This is a small category which targets four types of AI systems because their use presents risks of manipulations, disinformation, or deception. Firstly, AI systems intended to interact directly with natural persons, like a chatbot. Secondly, AI systems which generate content as image, audio, or video. In this category, we mainly find generative AI. Thirdly, emotion recognition systems and biometric categorization systems. Yet, when these systems are lawfully used to detect, prevent, or investigate criminal offenses, they are no longer included within the limited risk category. Fourthly, AI systems that generate or manipulate image audio or video content and generate deepfakes. These limited risk AI systems are subject to specific but limited transparency requirements. The boundary between high risk and limited risk AI systems is not hermetic. The classification of AI systems as limited risk does not prevent them from being also subject to the requirements and obligations of high risk AI systems. For example, when allowed, emotion recognition systems are high risk. However, they also qualify as limited risk systems if they are not used to detect, prevent, or investigate criminal offenses. These systems may thus be subject to specific transparency requirements besides all the requirements related to high risk systems. Finally, on the last tier of the pyramid, we have AI systems with minimal risk. This category encompasses all AI systems that do not fit into one or more of the categories discussed so far. In practice, this category includes most of AI applications currently available, such as AI-enabled video games and spam filters. These AI systems are not subject to any specific obligations under the regulation. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.